In this example, we've been asked to determine the integral of this function e to the 2x times sine 3x with respect to x. So I look at this function and see straight away that it is a product. And I know it's difficult to integrate a product. So I think of the methods that I have for integration, either a substitution. The rule for that is let u equal a function whose derivative is on the top line. Derivative of sine is cos, derivative of exponential is exponential. Neither of those functions appear, so it looks as though a substitution won't work. I then think of the integration by parts. And the method I usually use for integration by parts is let u equal one function that simplifies when I differentiate it and integrate the other function. In this case, I've got an exponential. The derivative of that is just another exponential. The derivative of sine is cos. So I see that n neither of these functions will simplify when I differentiate them. In this case, we have to do the integration by parts twice. Hopefully, we'll end up with exactly the same integral here, which we can then simplify. I'm going to demonstrate that method for you. So this is the method used for when we're integrating a product where neither of the functions in the product simplify when being differentiated. So we will just continue with the integration by parts. I will call this integral i, but if we go through now and do the parts, it doesn't really matter which function you let equal u. In this case, we'll just go with the first one, e to the 2x, which means dv, the second part of my integration, is equal to sine 3x dx. Always note that you have one differential in terms of the other differential. The integration by parts will require du in terms of dx and will require v. So I differentiate u and integrate the dv here. So in this case, a du dx is 2e to the 2x. So I bring the dx up to the other side and I have du in terms of dx. To work out v, I, just, I imagine putting an integral sign. The integral of 1 dv is v, and the integral of sine 3x is what I need to work out. So in this case, v will equal the 1 third cos of 3x. And I just make sure I've got the right sign. I remember my little code over here, disk and dickens. The derivative of sine is cos. The integral of sine is negative cos, so I've got to make sure I put a negative in here as well. So they're the parts I need for the integration by parts, and I go through and do my first integration by parts. This integral, we write out the rule, this integral will equal uv minus the integral of v du. As the integration by parts, and so substituting in all the values that I have, u times v, I'll see that I'll rearrange that to give me one negative one third e to the two x times cos three x. So that part there, u times v, just the e to the two x is in there, negative one third cos three x, negative one third cos three x. We just wrote it with the coefficients first, then the exponentials, then the logs. Uh, and the next part, minus v times du, so minus the v part will appear, appear there again, multiplied by du, minus will have a negative, keep track of your minuses, and so we'll end up with a positive, the integral of two-thirds e to the 2x cos 3x dx. So there's the first run of my integration by parts. I look at that and see that I've transformed the integral of an exponential and a sine into this function plus the integral of an exponential and a cos. So I haven't really simplified anything. If I do the integration by parts process again on this integral here, using the same functions for u as the exponential, dv as the trig function, with dx, then I should end up with my same integral that I started with. That's the process. From there, we can then simplify and evaluate this integral. I'll show you what we mean by that. So at this stage, I'm going to rewrite this, take the two-thirds out the front. So this integral, i, is now equal to negative one-third e to the 2x cos 3x. We take the two-thirds out the front, and we're left with the integral 
e to the 2x cos 3x with respect to x. And so this integral here, I'll now call that, say, uh, i2. or I, I don't even need to label it. Let's leave i as our original integral. So we'll just turn to this integral now. So let's write that one out. And so the integral of e to the 2x cos 3x with respect to x is what I'm going to work on. And I'm going to do this by integration by parts and substitute it back into this line here when I evaluate this integral, not forgetting that I'm multiplying whatever this result is by two-thirds. So I'm going to continue with the integration by parts on this one again. For this method to work, I need to let the u and dv equal the same respective parts of this function. So I need to let u equal the same exponential and dv equal the trig function dx. Let's put that over the side here. I'm going to let u equal e to the 2x again. And I'm going to let dv equal, in this term, the cos 3x dx. I know the integration by parts will require du in terms of dx and v, so I'm going to differentiate u, integrate dv. The du dx is equal to 2e to the 2x. So just bring the dx up to the other side. The integral of cos 3x gives me v one third sine 3x. Let's just double check we've got the signs the right way. The integral of cos, using the code up the top here, the integral of cos is sine. Looks like we've got it right. Just remember, when you're integ integrating cos of 3x, the derivative of the 3x, which is 3, comes out the front on the bottom line. There it is there as a coefficient. We're going to use these functions to integrate our second integral by parts. Let's write down the rule. It's equal to a uv minus the integral of v du. Substituting the parts in u times v, again I'll write the coefficient first, then the exponential, then the sine. So that's equal to one third e to the 2x times sine 3x minus the integral of v du, v times du. The coefficients are two thirds e to the 2x times sine 3x. e to the 2x sine 3x with respect to x. At this point here, I note that this integral that we've got here, I'll take the two thirds out the front, integral of e to the 2x sine 3x is the original integral that we were given. So, you might be thinking, we haven't done anything, we're back to where we started but it's the fact that neither of these two functions simplify when differentiated will allow us to actually get an expression for this. This is all the integration we need to do. We're now just going to simplify this. So I'll rewrite this to get the ex uh, coefficients out the front. e to the 2x sine 3x minus 2 thirds the integral that we're left with is the same as what we started with. And so at this stage here, I note that this integral is i. And so the second part, the second integral that we did, gives us an expression for i. We're going to take this, this whole expression, replace that integral with i, substitute it back into our first integral. So keep in mind that second integral, the second integration by parts, was to do the exponential cos. Exponential cos, so this term here, we're going to substitute into there, not forgetting that we're multiplying it by two-thirds. So substitute, let's write that down, substitute into, let's label this uh, line up here, we'll label that line one. Write down what we're doing, sub into line one, and let's see what we get the left hand side is i, so i is going to now equal minus one third e to the 2x cos 3x. So 
So this is my line. I is the left-hand side here, is all of this, plus 2 thirds times this integral. So let's put that in, plus 2 thirds. I'll put in some big square brackets, and instead of the exponential cos integral, I'm writing down our answer for that, including I as that second integral. So let's write that in here. All of this gives me another one-third e to the 2x sine 3x minus two-thirds i. So again, I've replaced that integral that we started with, which was labelled as i, as i in my expression here. i is an integral. We haven't got a formula or an answer for that integral, but I can rearrange everything here to give me a solution for i. So now what I'm going to do is expand out this set of square brackets by bringing this multiplication, the two-thirds, inside, taking any term with the i over to the left, factorize out the i, divide by the constant, and we'll see what we're left with. So in this case, I'm going to go through now, multiply out the brackets. So i is now equal to minus one-third e to the 2x cos 3x plus multiplying the constants inside will give me 2 ninths e to the 2x sine 3x. Multiplying the constant over to here as well, we'll get negative 4 ninths of i. I want to bring this i over to here to combine with this i, and you'll see we'll have no integrals left on the right-hand side. So when the minus 4 ninths comes over here, it will become positive 4 ninths. i plus 4 ninths of i will equal, let's see what we can simplify here. We've got a common factor of e to the 2x. We've got a common factor of 1 third. Let's uh, take that out. So also note that we've got a negative in the first term here and a positive here. So I'm going to re rewrite these around the other way to have the positive first with the minus. So let's do all that in one stage. I'm taking a one-third outside and an e to the 2x outside. Factorizing that out of this factor here, I'll be left with two-thirds in the sine function. Rewriting this term, it's a negative now. The one-third and the exponential come out. I'm left with the cos. Okay, I'm getting close. I just need a final expression for i by itself. Our original question was integrate i equals this thing here, or we let that equal i. And so to find i by itself, I can think of adding these two together or taking i out of a common, uh, common factor for these two. Four ninths, one is like nine ninths. So four ninths and nine ninths is thirteen ninths. I've got thirteen ninths of i, which is equal to all of this. Let's rewrite it. One third e to the two x outside of two thirds sine three x minus cos three x. So now to get i by itself, I'm multiplying up by nine dividing down by 13, and that will give me i equaling, multiplying up by the 9, the 9 will come up here onto the top line, will cancel with the 3 that's on the bottom line, leaving me with a 3 on the top line. So I'm going to have 3 thirteenths e to the 2x outside of 2 thirds sine 3x minus cos 3x. In the integration by parts, nowhere along the line have we kept track of the arbitrary constants when we go through and integrate. We realise that if we were to differentiate this solution to end up with our original function, there is a chance that we could have had an arbitrary constant on the end here. So after all the work is done, assume that all the arbitrary constants are added together 
and we put in a plus C on the bottom line. There's the final answer for the integral of a function that has a product of two functions that doesn't neither simplifies when you go through and differentiate them. This process of doing the integration by parts twice, ending up with the same integral you started with, and then rearranging to get an expression for that integral.